personally, I know him as the guy that finally got me sourcing on Facebook, which I never did before because I thought, you know, Facebook, that's not the place to look for candidates. And since then, I've met a lot more candidates than I did before. So thank you. Um, so without further ado, I would like to introduce to the stage Balas Parochai from Randstad SourceRide. Welcome. And uh, yesterday we had a speaker's dinner and uh, Balash and I found out that we had another thing in common and that we both share a passion for... Yeah. Kung Fu Panda. Any other Kung Fu Panda fans Kung in Fu the room? Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. Anyone? Hands yeah. up. Yeah. When I say Shabada. Shabada. You got it? Very good. Cool. Very good. Excellent. Okay. So I think uh, your title sounds a bit like you're a technology skeptic. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm, I'm old school. Yeah, I'm yeah. a paper person. <laughs> so what's going to be the thing uh, that, that you want us to take away yeah, so back to the, the office from your story? Yeah, hopefully the thing is that I really okay that technology will blind your mind. Are you, are you fine with that one? I guess that's it. Okay, well, the cool. stage is yours. Thank you. Balas Porcha. Okay, am I not too loud? I can tell you I hear myself like probably 10 times when I see a word. So can we try, have you seen Kung Fu Panda? Yeah, can we try a Shabada, please, a Shabada, for my sake of my son. My son, son, he's six, he loves Kung Fu Panda. So when I say three, two, one, just say Shabada. Okay, hold on, stand by, ready? Three, two, one, Shabada. Good, okay, so the story is that I quite often speak about sourcing, right? And when I speak about sourcing, people usually get so excited. As excited that for a long time I thought, don't get me wrong, that it was because of me, right? So you are on stage, you speak about sourcing, and people are just smiling. And you thought, wow, that's my personal impact. You know, that's my influencing on people. That's how I build the, the crowd. And after a while, I unfortunately had to understand that there is nothing in correlation with me. When I talk about sourcing, people get excited because of this. Technology! That's the perception. The perception is that sourcing is the most geeky part of recruiting. Sourcing is the word of Facebook cracking and hacking and tricks and hints and whatsoever. Sourcing is full of extension, Chrome plugins, you know, applications. So that, 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 that's the cool stuff. So when I talk about sourcing, people usually ask questions like this. Show us your sourcing power. Or a question like this. Where is your secret weapon? Or a question like this. Hey, you brave sourcing video. The thing is, guys, that I understood that people always think that there's a secret weapon thing, right? If you think back these pictures, you always saw that there was a weapon or sword or, you know, a tool in the hand of the person, of, well, on the animal. People do have an attachment that sourcing is, is, is all about technology. And it caused me a really long, hard time to, to try to tell them that there is no anything like a secret weapon, really. There is nothing, nothing to share. And, you know, interesting, because when I talk about sourcing, people, people always want me to say that thing, that one thing that makes me the balash bullshit. There's no thing, no such a thing. But the bad is that people just don't believe it. People are dreaming. People want to believe that there is a, such a thing, such a tool, a tool. So, so after a while, I decided to, to hopefully to steal a quote from Glenn Cathy. Um, I'm a little bit afraid that I just made it up. Um, so I checked with Glenn the last days. The Glenn once said that just think about LinkedIn just to understand the technology. LinkedIn, every search on LinkedIn starts with 400 million people for all of us, right? The same pool. And all you have to do is just to narrow down to the best profiles. And I'm using this quote, hopefully. Is it, is it from you, Glenn? Sort of? Yeah? Okay, well, okay, cool, thank you. So I'm using this quote to, to really try to make people understand that no secret, no such a thing like a silver bullet. It's, it's not like that. So basically the message is, and that's my last Kung Fu on the slide, that there is no secret ingredient. 
It's, it's you. Right? It's you. It's how you do the things. So I will talk about technology still. But I want to talk about those seven things that I developed to assess technology. So it's a list of uh, barriers, if you wish, a list of observations, a list of uh, arguments. And I feel really difficult today because everyone is so excited about Google and all of the AI things. So I'm playing the advocate of devil role now. So hopefully you will argue with me. First, the first argument. A serious one. And now, first argument. Ah. First argument that Babel, Babel still exists. So I was listening to the Google, Google person. I'm so happy that we can do everything in English. So good. But, you know, we have a little bit more languages in English. How many, do you know how many native, native English speaking people are on the planet? Tell me a number. How many? Native. 300 million, yeah, sort of. 300, 400 million. How many people are on the planet who claim they speak English as their second or third language? Approximately. A billion. Sort of like 900 million, right? So if you sum it up, that's nothing more than 1.3 billion people. But 5 billion don't speak English. And don't get me wrong, but, but those five million, billion people do matter. I mean, all of these cool US and UK driven tools and packs and, you know, all of these extremely lovely stuff, we just miss them out, clearly. We will never again there. If you, if you think about language, I love this quote from Ludwig Wittgenstein. I'm not telling you that I read all of his philosophy. I'm just, I just love this quote. But he's saying that the limits of my language the limit of my language is the limit of my word. If we don't have the word, we don't have the word. Hopefully my pronunciation gives you the message. So can I ask you to, to join me for an experiment? Can you take your iPhones or smartphones or tablets? Go to translate.google.com. Translate.google.com. I'm sorry, Google and type in the word manage and try to translate to German. Ready? Did you get it? What is the first word that you see? Verwalten, correct. The second is, I, I don't speak German, but the second is manigen or manigen probably. The third is Steuern, Schaffen, Handhaben, Bewältigen, Leuten, Führen, Auskommen, Regen, Bewer, whatever. Right? Language is not a matter of translation. Language is a matter of word. So when you talk about, when you think about language as a barrier in our word, that's a serious issue, right? The limit of my language is the limit of the word. It's not a problem that you can't translate a word to run a search. But basically, you have no clue which word you have to look for. And that, that's a serious issue. If you think about language, language has impact on parsing and matching. And I, I'm personally really grateful for, for Jakub and, and, and his team. So Tax Kernel has, has been doing a great job in six, seven languages in terms of matching, I guess, which is really strong. Tax Kernel is the only company in, on the world who, can really, who, who has built in semantic search matching in these languages. But again, the point is that there are 3,000 more languages. If you think about language, think about assessment, think about engagement, think about tools like Textio. Have you heard about Textio? Probably. Have you heard about Crystal Nose? Have you heard about IBM Watson, the personal insights? I can tell you, I, I went to IBM Watson and I, I tried the personal insights demo on myself. I, I'm blogging, so I have, I have blogs. So I decided to put my blogs to understand what IBM Watson thinks about me as a person. I tried with three different blog content and I got three different personalities, which might be the case, I don't know, right? Um, if you have three different personalities, you never know what's the case. But, but accuracy from a language perspective is a, is a serious issue. So I'm saying that you know, it's all good to, you know, to, to talk about technology, but number one barrier that Babel 
bubble still exists. And I see no any company who can really overcome. OK, second, overprocessing. What do I mean by overprocessing? Um, I try to do another experiment. Can I please ask you to stand up for a second? Thank you. So now, imagine that you, have a, you get a new requisition. And my question is that, um, please, those people who would normally start the search on LinkedIn, those people, please stand. So keep standing. The rest, please sit down. But those who would normally go to LinkedIn as a first step, please stand. OK. Pretty interesting. So now, those people from the, from the standing ones, whoever has an ATS at home in place, you can sit down. The rest, please stand. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. Thank you. Thank you. The whole point is that why do you start your search on LinkedIn if you have your ATS in place? I, I, I don't get it. Right? That's, that's something to think about. I, I can understand that ATS is, is not proper or there are many bad functionalities. I can understand you can't search whatever problem you may have. However, my question is that isn't, wouldn't that be your number one priority to fix your ATS rather than to start on LinkedIn? That's a question. We, I heard a story about a, a huge UK recruitment agency. And they made a source of higher analysis last year, 2015. So what they wanted to understand that how many people they placed who could have been already fund in the ATS. Do you know what was the percentage? So how many people were placed who had already been in the ATS, but they didn't use the ATS to find them? What's the percentage? It was 80%, eight zero. Eight zero percent of time they already had a candidate in place. They just didn't use the ATS. Why? because they thought that we have technology and we have LinkedIn and we have all of these cool stuff, so we have to go there. We have GitHub and we have Stack Overflow and you know, we will find Java developers there. But 80% of the time, 80%, that's four days a week, they had everything in place already. Huge question mark. So the way how I see technology from, from, from this standpoint, from overprocessing standpoint, is that I think that technology creates an impression about possibility. Right? It's an unlimited possibility. Think about LinkedIn. LinkedIn Netherlands, like you've got, like what, 78% penetration, you know? really high. It's a possibility. But possibility doesn't necessarily mean necessity. Because you can use something, it doesn't mean you have to use. And whenever you use something, you know, whenever you do a, a wasteful process step, actually you do overprocessing, and overprocessing kills. It gives your time, gives your money and gives efficiency. So again, just think about it next time. The more tools you bring in, the more extra process steps you will create in your process. OK, next one. Maybe now. Next one. Disconnected platforms. That's one of my favorites. <clears throat> Why I think that this is a barrier? For two reasons. One is that. Let me give you another sample. Quite often, you know, we don't have in the center in Budapest, you know, it's like 120, 30 people. We don't have any LinkedIn recruiter license, right? We don't use the talent pipeline function of LinkedIn. And quite often people ask that, you know, why? why? Is it because it's Budapest, so you want to, you know, manage the cost? But the answer is not. not. I don't want people, I don't want my sorcerers to, to use multiple systems at the same time. I don't want to have a disconnected platform environment in my world. I want my people to use one system constantly, one portfolio. I want them to track everything in one place, and that one place is my ATS. What's the point that, you know, sometimes you know, people go to LinkedIn, sometimes people go to Xing, sometimes people go to WhatsApp or to Twitter, and they track things differently. The whole disaggregation that, again, you know, builds total non-efficiency for you. So you can't track. Again, so that, that's why I think that the, the whole, whole disconnection from a technology perspective is a, 
can, can be a serious, can be a serious barrier. Moving on, the bugs, the word of bugs. Um, I think the word of bugs, you know, this is something we believe is just occasional, right? When LinkedIn is done, when Google is asking constantly whether I'm a robot or not, we believe, yeah, yeah, this is just happening. This is just an accident. But actually, I understood that we live in a constant world of bugs, right? I don't know how much percentage yet, but probably two, three percentage of, of our time with technology is bug, is, 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 is done time, is not working. So it's a constant word. It's a word of bugs. You know, you feel like this all, all the time. Um, interesting, you know, when Connectifier was acquired by LinkedIn, that was a, that was a really interesting discussion on, on Facebook. And, and one of the recruiters, you know, he said that, oh, thanks God, I still remember Boolean. So because, you know, Connectifier will be shut down probably by LinkedIn, but thanks God, I still can do Boolean on my own. And I was so surprised. I was like, oh my God, are we that reliant on technology? Is it really what we do? If LinkedIn buys tomorrow, I don't know, whatever, a tax kernel and they kill it, you know, we will die. So the word of bugs is a, is a serious issue. I leave this one to you. I, I have no really comment. The no support word. It feels like this. You have a problem, you have an app, you want to fix it, your whole production stopped, and you feel like this. No support, it's a startup. It's a US startup. They are still sleeping. Wait. Next one, lack of data, lack of analytics. Um, I, I, I am the person who would love to see big data everywhere. Trust me, I would, I would love, I'm, but Glenn is different because he's, he's much more like a data person. I'm, I'm like, I'm always saying that Glenn is the Lord of sourcing. So he's the data guy, but I would love to see data sets everywhere. But I'm pretty sure that it's not only our clients, you know, who are struggling to export the simple report from the ATS. The lack of data is, uh, unfortunately, is a pretty significant phenomenon today. And when I say lack of data, I don't only think about, you know, performance reports, but not only you know, about job reports, but also about candidate reports. How many of you, how many of you have a have a system in place where you can really track candidate diversity and you can track their you know, reply rate and you can track their interest and behavior, probably not too many, right? But that all must be coming from, from, from these tools. So focusing on this one should be, should be really a priority. And this is something we can do with our ATS. We don't need any, any bigger systems. And the last one, the last one is where do you put your money? Um, probably most of us, um, well, probably all of us are struggling by having a limited budget, right? So probably it's not only me with Runstad, but, but it's all of us. That's the world we live in. So the question is that where we put our money is, I guess, is a significant question. But what I like to ask questions, what I, what I like to challenge, you know, my colleagues is that think about from a money perspective, what does cost more? A two minutes extra search per candidate for buying a LinkedIn recruiter license. It's a simple calculation. You should calculate it. What does cost more, sending a LinkedIn email or making a phone call? It's a money question, and you can calculate it. What does cost more to fix your ATS, let's say, from a data perspective, or to buy a data integration system and implement as a middleware to your ATS? These are the right questions. So I guess the, the question usually is not that, okay, do we have budget to buy this new system? But the question is to, that break down to the activity level and ask these questions, because that's, that's how we'll see the, the real ROI. So I feel like I, I created a dreadful, dreadful moment in your life. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I pretty much like technology. Do you remember this movie? Do you remember which movie it is? Back to Future, you know, when it was filmed, 1985. Um, Do you remember what was the future in the movie? 2015, 
that was last year. You remember that people thought that by 2015 they will have these flying skateboards whatsoever? Well, yeah. I don't know, maybe it's just Budapest, but I don't see too many of these on the streets. So, so I, yeah, with all my respect and enthusiasm with all of these cool things, I just want to remind ourselves that we always think about the future as something super cool. And the reality is, is a little bit more like this. And actually, we have to build things today that we can build on all the cool things. So the foundation of everything in the future is, is today. And today we can do things. Today we can, we can, sorry, we can bring in these things. You can think about that, okay, where do you put your money? Do you have access to data? Is it worse for your time to ha live in a constant bug world? All of these questions. And I guess this is what we did for our future, for our present, sorry. That was our starting point three and a half years ago. First, what we did, we said, you know what? Forget everything. ATS, building everything, everything, whatever you can into your ATS, to maximize the power of your ATS. You must have a super cool ATS, which works as a CRM, as an ATS, you have access to data, whatever you want to do. ATS is the answer. Yes, artificial intelligence, really cool, but your ATS must be the number one point. Second, um, <clears throat> I still believe that you can teach the basics. I still believe, I, I, I was really sad when Glenn, you said that, what was that, that converting recruiters into sorcerers will never really happen. I was, I agree with you, but still I believe it's a donkey, donkey shot play, you know, it's a donkey shot battle. We have to try it. We have to try to teach the basics. Three, I believe that quite often we miss the point that this is not a weirdest, not the most exotic who wins, but the quickest. Recruitment is so simple, so really simple. There's a rack, there's a candidate, there's a hire, bam. You don't have to, you don't always have to go to GitHub or to go to the deep website, you know, to, to, to move into the dark side and find some little hidden data. You don't always have to do that. It's the quickest. It's not the most exotic. Four, tools are nothing. That's what I understood. Tools are basically nothing. But the way how you use a tool, that's everything. But quite often people forget it. Five, and that's my last, is that, that's why I understood, you know, with, with, with my team, that if you provide people tools, can you just make sure that you also tell them that what is the right moment when they have to use that tool? You know, it's like having a sword, having a gun, having a weapon, having, you know, having all of these things on you. You don't always use these tools. But if you don't tell people, if you don't show people that this is the right moment when you will use your gun, and this is that moment when you have to use the sword, they, they don't understand it. People think that they always have to use all of these tools. You know, quite often I told my sorcerers that, yes, Facebook searching is super cool, but again, please start with your ATS, because that's, that's the best channel. So, that was it. I survived this role. I can tell you it feels really bad on a technology conference to say, well, technology, ho, ho, hold on, hold on, hold on. If there is a last final statement, I want to use the last quote from, from my Hungarian roots. We have a pretty nice saying when we say that you don't shoot with cannon to catch a single sparrow. So I leave it to you, and hopefully you have some questions and you will kill me right now. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, Balazs. Yeah. Uh, any questions from the audience for Balazs? I'm peering in the... Yeah, there is one over there. Sorry. Hi there. Um, thanks very much for that. Just a quick question. Uh, obviously, in your role as an innovation professional, what are you genuinely really excited about? I understand the concerns, but what are you looking forward? What are you, what are you looking forward to? From a technology perspective? Yeah, I would love to, but from my perspective, from a searching perspective, I would love to see face recognition in place. I mean, that, I guess that would solve our life, really. So, you know, I would just take a picture of you guys now. Boom. I would go home, upload a picture, and here we go. That, that would be my dream, so uh, I want to believe it, it, it's coming. 
from a from a tech perspective. Yeah, maybe you should ask the Google guy, right? <laughs> maybe maybe I should influence the Google guy. <laughs> um, any more questions here, René? Um, you said that uh, you think the quickest wins. Um, so how do you look at uh, uh, basically uh, cost and quality and speed? I mean, obviously the quickest doesn't win. Uh, there has to be any quality, I guess. Well, yeah. Um, so you know, so we do measure all the channels and all the tools that we have in place, and you know, and we measure per submission, per hire, per whatsoever, right? So we are pretty much data freak. Um, the reason why I'm saying the quickest wins because, you know, many of many of the conferences that I I join, I quite often you know meet with people who try to impress the audience with with, with the cool and weird stuff, right? Um, and I just constantly feel this is fake. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I, I brought you the thing I believe in, but I appreciate this may not be the most sexy thing on earth, right? And I'm always thinking that I, I could have come to you with, you know, showing you a few applications and a few tools and probably would, you would leave the room with like, wow, he's, he's an expert. <laughs> I just wanted to take the time to say, no, 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 no. Recruitment is not about these things. Recruitment is matching and, and it's a process thing and, and it's all about time. So the quickest wins. That's it, the quickest. Any more questions? One over here. So I'm going to take a bit of a leap here and say that if you say that recruitment is not about tools and systems, it's going to be about people. Um, you also talked about recruiters being sources and that. In the current world, what does the best recruiter look like? Yeah, um, that's an interesting question. Yeah, yeah good question. <laughs> so maybe we just want one thing. So can you point them out in the room, maybe? <laughs> yeah, uh, I do believe that technology has a certain serious place, right? I just wanted to say that manage our expectations or manage our excitement. That, that's all I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm saying that prepare for present and do your utmost in the present because otherwise you won't be able to build the future. That, that, that's one. In terms of recruiter resourcer, um, my personal preference is to have these two in two different functions. I do believe that sourcing is a profession and recruitment a different one. I do believe that sourcers have to be, but that's, that's everything that's all about searching, but identification, engagement, attraction. Why recruitment, I think, is, is all about client management. That's how I see the word. I think the recruiter's job is to close, always be closing. That's, that's the, your job. To, to run the process and close, 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 close. And sourcing brings in the food. Any more questions? No? I have actually one more question. I recently ran into a group of uh, people I trained in sourcing and they had a very big problem because the people they were looking for, they were not identifiable online because they didn't leave any trace. And, and it was nice because it was the digital generation, like people in their mid twenties. And they just couldn't believe that some, some people are not professionally identifiable online. And you and I know those people exist, but you still need to find them. Yeah. And I know it's a very old school question, but how would you go about finding people in certain professions or roles, which don't leave traces online, who don't leave digital information? Yeah. Um, Maybe I can share. Maybe I can share one of the stories quickly. Do, do I have? Yeah, we have minutes? Uh, five minutes. I still have 15 minutes, guys. So please ask questions. No, no, no. no. Um, <laughs> so I'm looking at Frank. You think I can share this crap? I will share without names. So one of the senior executives of one of the senior executives of Ronstadt, a really elder person, he came to me a few years ago and said, "You know what? My wife is turning 70." And she used to have a best friend in high school. Um, the wife is really 70 years old, and the best friend, we all assume, was in the same age. And, uh, and this executive asked me whether I can find that, that friend. Well, I can tell you it was a German story. So people in Germany don't often, you know, are way too social media savvy in the age of 70, right? So it's not, it's not that you find them on Facebook or whatever else. So, and, and that will be my answer. So what I did though, is that I found, I found the, the, the wife 
in a one piece of social media. That was a German social media by T-Systems. And I found a friend which was in the same high school than the wife's best friend, right? So it was three other ladies in my school. But there was no any footprint of the, of the target person, nothing, zero. She wasn't there. And by the way, we didn't even know whether she changed her name, whether she's still alive. So, you know, it was a nice challenge. So what I did is that I tried to search around the, the mid person, right? The middle, middle man, middle woman. And I understood that actually she wasn't on Facebook, but she had a digital footprint somewhere, which was referring to, to, her, to her daughter. And the daughter was on Facebook. And by the way, through the daughter's Facebook profile, you could identify quite some information. So what I could do is to, is to, is to go back to, to this executive saying that, listen, all we know is that we know the number, the phone number and email address of the daughter. So you may want to call the daughter to ask for the phone number of the mother who hopefully can lead us to the friend. And that's my answer. I guess everyone can be reachable today via the internet. Yeah. But indirect rather than direct. Indirect one, sure. Okay, yeah. cool. Nice story. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Balaj.